now as National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications, John Kirby. Uh, Admiral, it's good to have you on this morning, sir. Thanks. Good to be with you. So some of the House, you know, let's talk about funding for Ukraine. Some of the House Republicans who have been critical of Ukraine funding just managed yesterday to oust House Speaker Kevin McCarthy uh, from his role, took that gavel away from him. So how does the White House plan to bring these skeptical Republicans on board with your additional funding request, especially now that Congress is practically frozen? Well, it's difficult to know what would be available for us to, to put forward to, to this small group of very vocal Republicans in the House to change their minds on Ukraine. Uh, I would note that they do not represent the bulk uh, of their caucus in, in the House. They don't represent the, the majority of their party. They don't even represent uh, the current leadership in the House uh, in terms of the committee uh, leaders. So uh, we, we're going to focus on the fact that supporting Ukraine is the right thing to do, not just for Ukraine, but for the American people or for our national security interests. And for those who want to take that support away, they should be asking themselves, why would they be willing to do Putin's bidding? Because Putin would love nothing more uh, than for the United States to fracture and, and fissure on support to Ukraine and see the West also follow suit. It is critical that Ukraine have what they need to fight in coming weeks and months. Uh, and again, it's not just for Ukraine, although principally it is, it is for our own national security interests. Yeah, and you know, I, you bring me to my next question, and you know this better than anybody else. It's not just lawmakers who are critical of Ukraine spending. Everyday Americans are also upset that 113 billion in aid has been approved. Many are angered that President Biden has asked for another 24 billion to be approved in this latest government funding bill. Uh, yet he's not even visited East Palestine, Ohio. How do you respond to those Americans who want to see that kind of focus and that kind of money spent here at home on our home turf instead? Uh, my, my answer to that would be to, to ask Americans how much more expensive do they think it's going to be if we just allow Putin to take Ukraine. And by the way, he hasn't given up his plans to do that. He would just like to subjugate the whole country like it didn't exist. Where does it stop there, to Secretary Blinken's point? What message does that send to him and to other would-be uh, dictators out there uh, that would want to grab territory by force? Because if you think again that it's expensive supporting Ukraine now, Think about how much exorbitantly more it will cost, not just in American treasure, but in American blood, potentially, if this expands into a larger uh, war uh, in Europe or, or elsewhere around the world, where American troops will be obligated to fight. Right now, we have no troops on the ground. We're simply giving the tools for Ukraine to fight. The last thing I'd say on this uh, is that of all the founding ideals in this country, the one that resonates the most with all Americans is the idea of independence. It doesn't matter how you vote, red or blue, everybody understands how important independence is to this country and to our founding and to who we are as Americans. That's all Ukraine is doing. They're fighting for their independence. And we would do well to remember that we didn't win our independence back in 1776 without foreign assistance. Now, back then, we actually had foreign troops on the ground here uh, in the colonies. We're, Ukraine is not even asking for that. They're just asking for foreign assistance, the same kind of assistance we got when we tried to secure our own independence. Yeah. Uh, and, and speaking of foreign affairs, uh, if we could pivot while I still have you, I also wanted to ask you quickly about immigration. Uh, Secretary Blinken also spoke about the migrant crisis. And, you know, we're here in Chicago for this show, so I wanted to ask. It comes as the Democratic governor of Illinois, J.B. Pritzker, publicly pressed the White House for help handling these waves of migrants, calling the crisis untenable. You have the mayor of New York City saying the same thing. In your eyes, could the White House be doing more and better to stop this crisis? Well, there's not a day that goes by that we aren't focused on the, the challenge of immigration here today from all levels. We're opening up more legal pathways. That's been a core focus of uh, President Biden's approach, a safe, humane, orderly process for legal immigration. We are we are cracking down on enforcement mechanisms, working with partners in the region uh, to turn those away who would try to approach illegally. And just as critically, we're trying to deal with the root causes of all this migration. There are more people on the move. Uh, right now, across the world, migration-wise, than there has been since World War II. And that is particularly acute here in the Western Hemisphere. We're not the only country that's facing these pressures. Every country in the hemisphere is, is facing these pressures. And we've got to get at the root causes that are making these people go on the move. Uh, and weather's getting better now as fall approaches. Uh, so it's a little bit more uh, 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 tenable for people to try to make this dangerous journey. But again, we've got a holistic approach here. What we need is Congress to support our efforts and to help us get at 
the root causes and that get at better border security uh, there on the southern border. In the supplemental in request the Admiral, that the president asked for and did not, we did not get uh, funding for, there was $4 billion uh, for border enhancements. And just a quick follow up, you know, with all these things that you're saying the White House is working on, why aren't American cities feeling it then? Well, again, there, there's a lot of policies here by, by some uh, uh, governors uh, around that southern border sending these people uh, north in, in quite an in, inhumane fashion. Uh, we're not blind to what's going on. We have provided extra funding and extra support to some of these cities, particularly in New York City, in, in the twos of millions of dollars to try to help them deal with this. Uh, we're, we recognize what's going on and we're working with cities as best we can. All right. Admiral John Kirby, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, sir, for joining Morning in America. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.